Hey everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level. In the last video, I built this Oldham coupling and I got it working. There was just a couple of problems when I moved it off Origin and there were a couple more things that I wanted to do to it. I wanted to keep going and make it a bit more interesting. I thought it would be cool if this could move up and down and actually calculate the circle to be bigger or smaller depending on where you have that bone. To start with that, I actually added a joint here and I removed the uh, copy rotation from it and I just parented this one that's sort of driving this one to that new joint or that new bone that I just added. Now this one can move up and down. That parent can take care of that, but the rotation happens on that secondary bone. By doing that, I've isolated the location and the rotation calculation to two different bones, and it's just gonna make it a little bit cleaner because now this one here just has to move on one axis to achieve that. If I wanted to do it this one, see how that axis is constantly changing? I would have had to do like some weird global uh, translation to get that to work on multiple axes but now I can just keep it to one. Now I will have to use a driver for this and I'm actually gonna drive the scale of the circle. So on the circle itself, on the scale, I wanna drive the Y and the Z value based on the location of this joint here. Now this joint is at zero by default. So on the Z axis, I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna go copy as new driver on the circle or the Bezier circle on Y, I'm gonna right-click on the scale and do paste driver. I'll do the same thing for the Z axis as well. Now you notice that my circle has disappeared and so has the mesh and joint attached to it. That's because it set the scale to zero because I copied a location value that was at zero. So I'm just gonna open up my drivers panel. And if I go to the Y axis and go to drivers, you'll see that that driver value is zero. I'm gonna flip this to scripted expression and I have my location option here, I'm just gonna add one. And I'll do the same thing for the Y axis here. I'll do scripted expression, I'll just add one. That means when the location is at zero, it's always gonna be at one at the scale. And now if I grab this down, well, it's not quite working. You see how my circle is getting uh, sort of a negative value? That's because when this moves down, it's actually getting a negative location and that's subtracting from my scale. All I need to do is just put a negative in front of my location sign and I'm good to go. So now I have a dynamic circle that moves up and down here and my actual geometry follows that. So this was looking really cool. I had a dynamic piece that I could move up and down and sort of keep that in motion. I want to go even one more step now and that's to make this uh, sort of a rig that can move anywhere in space. If I grab all three of these joints and sort of move them, I'm getting really, really weird things happening. Uh, it's kind of getting this really weird rig activity. So I'm gonna add one more joint. I'm just gonna put it at the origin. I'll just scale this one up. And this is gonna be my root node. First thing I'll do is I'll select these three bones and I'll just parent it to this main joint that I added right here. I don't need to worry about this one because it's just parented at this one right here. All right, so now if I grab this and move it around, I'm getting something weird happening with sort of that circle copy follow path one. It's because my circle is staying at origin right now. What I can do is do a bone parent to my root node here. Now I can grab this and move it, but I am getting a double transform on this joint here. It's because the circle is moving and it's also getting the constraint value now. So it's getting its values from this joint here and from the circle causing it to double transform. What I actually need to do is unparent that bone. So I did clear parent. Now I have it. Now I have a joint that I can translate and I have this one here that can move up and down. So if I want to say, kind of rotate this entire thing, I can rotate it right around. I'm running into one more problem though. If I rotate this, I'm getting some really weird rotations on this. And I think it was because the follow path was coming after the copy rotation. If I put that copy rotation after, it's gonna basically overwrite any rotational values on that follow path, which is great because for the follow path, I just want the translation. So I bumped that up, I put everything back at origin, I gave that a test and it worked great. So now I had a joint to sort of move the entire old ham coupling anywhere in space. And at any time I could also change the distance here. So now I had a pretty interesting rig. So this was ready, this was good to go, except I found one more issue with my rig. And that was if I moved it in object space, I was getting a double transform again on the 
uh, center joint here. I kind of wanted this to be stable in any mode, whether it's pose or object mode. So this is getting a double transform now because it's getting values from the circle itself, which is bone parented to this joint here. And it's getting the object transforms, which are these values here. Compared to in pose mode, um, that was stable because it was just getting the circle. If I turn off the follow path, this is actually stuck at origin. So it's getting the circle to move it in space. To fix this so it would be stable in all modes, I actually grabbed the middle joint that I'd added and I made it its own object. So I flipped to edit mode, uh, hit P on my keyboard to separate the bone, and now it's its own armature object here. Sometimes I have issues with objects that are actually parented when I separate them. Uh, so what I actually do is just clear the parent and just parent it again to that center bone. Last thing I do is just give this some more interesting objects. So I just added some mesh circles here. And I just connected this to the viewport display and I duplicated it over as well. There's only really two controls on this rig. And the other bones here, I don't even need to really see. So I actually just hid them in a different layer. And this one here, I don't need to see either. That can just be hidden. So now I have a really solid rig that I can move in object mode and rotate in object mode in any direction I want. Uh, I can play it and get that interesting functionality where it's following that circle. I can then flip to pose mode and in local space, just grab that Z axis, move it around, and also grab the main control and move it around as well. This made a really solid functional predictable rig and that's sort of the full extent of where I wanted to take it to, just to see if I could make something that was stable, sort of with any transform that was put on it. This was a pretty fun challenge. Uh, I'm doing another video for my patrons talking about how I built the more sci-fi looking one and all my lighting settings that go along with that. Head on over there if you want to check that out. And my level two and level three tiers will also be getting those files too, so they can check out the sci-fi one with all the lights and everything. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and let me know if you have any other joint types that you want me to check out and sort of troubleshoot how I would rig it and make it functional and stable so it could work in a bigger robotic settings. Talk to you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>